Hey guys, we're going to do a quick video today that's going to show you all about how to get Xamarin installed and running on your Windows system. After this, you'll be developing in Visual Studio and successfully debugging and building those apps for both iOS and Android. So without further ado, let's jump in. Possibly the easiest way and the fastest way to get up and running with Xamarin on Windows is actually to do it as part of the Visual Studio 2015 installer. Now, of course, that assumes that you're using Visual Studio 2015. If you're not, no worries. We're going to look at the unified installer right after this. But if you are using Visual Studio 2015, then this is a really fast way to go. You can either do it as part of the initial installation of VS, or if you already have Visual Studio installed, go into your Programs and Features area, and let's just search for Visual Studio. Once we find the right item, we'll just hit change. Then we're going to hit modify. And we'll scroll down and we're going to find the cross platform area and under that the Xamarin entry. So here we're going to go ahead and check that. Of course, on this installation, I already have that checked because we're doing this a little out of order. I actually already have the Xamarin Unified Installer installed, which did that for us. However, if this is the way that you're handling it, you're just going to check that checkbox, and that's also automatically going to check your Android SDK. Then I would also highly recommend the Visual Studio Emulator for Android. That's a really well-performing emulator for Android, performs much better than the Android uh, SDK emulators. And it actually plays on Windows really well alongside the Windows Phone emulator since both are on Hyper-V. So highly recommend that you include that if you're doing any sort of Android development. Then we're just going to make sure we have those things clicked or checked and then we'll hit update. All right, guys. So assuming we actually want to use the Xamarin Unified installer, then we're not going the Visual Studio 2015 installer route. Then we're going to go ahead and get started at the Xamarin.com website. Hit this download link up at the top. Can't miss it. Now my virtual machine is kind of slow here. You guys will have to pardon me. I had to create a virtual machine just to do this install video for you guys. All right, once we get to this form right here, we're just going to fill in a little information about ourselves and our company and how we're going to develop apps. Then hit one more download button. And when we do that, we're going to be given this file right here, xamarininstaller.exe, which we can double click. And we'll go ahead and send troubleshooting information to Xamarin. Now, yes, we will in fact let this make changes to our computer. And now we're going to actually load up that installer program. One more next. Agree to some licensing terms. And then figure out where we want our Android SDK located. Well, I am just fine with the default location. And so now we're going to look at our options here. So we're going to have Android SDK installed. That's going to be pretty big. This is what's going to take the bulk of our installation time. We will need the GTK installed, so that GTK Sharp, so that's going to be installed. Xamarin Studio and Xamarin will be installed. So this is Xamarin here is our Visual Studio plugin. So this is how we're going to be able to develop our Xamarin apps using Visual Studio. So everything looks good to me, and I'm going to click Next. I will agree to the licensing terms once again. This one's the GTK Sharp agreement. And now we're going to download a lot of files. So through the magic of video, we will come back when we actually have something else to do with this installer. All right, so installation is done. That's really all there is to it. We're just going to hit close and be ready to move on to our next step. An optional item you might want to install if you're going to be developing Android applications is the Xamarin Android player. It will work a lot faster than the built-in or the Android emulators that come with the Google or the Android SDK. It does not, however, play nicely with Hyper-V. So if you're also developing Windows Phone apps, then you're probably better off using the Visual Studio Android player. If you're using the Visual Studio Android player, you're going to install it through Visual Studio setup process. If, however, you do want to use the Xamarin Android player, you can come to xamarin.com slash android-player, and you'll just scroll down to the bottom here. 
and from there hit download for Windows. Okay, if we're doing the Xamarin Android player, that's how we're going to do it. All right, so now that we've got Visual Studio up and running with Xamarin installed, we're going to want to be able to test some code, make sure we can actually run stuff, run apps, right? So we're going to need to be able to build to our simulators to make sure things work. Well, one of the things that's going to involve is connecting to our iOS build machine. So we no longer, like old versions of Xamarin, are going to be using a build host app on the build machine. Instead, we're going to connect directly to Mac over SSH. And here's how we're going to do that. Let's go to our Xamarin Tools area. So I'm going to go to uh, Tools and iOS, Xamarin Mac Agent here. And here, I'm going to see instructions to start setting up my Mac. Now here it says on your Mac you can invoke Spotlight and search for remote login. This doesn't always work, but if it doesn't, that's okay. You'll just need to open up your settings app. And if we slide over here, I've got mine open. So we're going to open our system preferences app. And inside here, we'll find the sharing section. In sharing, we're just going to enable remote login. And then we're going to give permission to a set of users. Once we've done that, we can go back over and click continue, continue to see the same instructions and OK when we're done. Now, Visual Studio has found my Mac, so I will go ahead and click connect. And at this point, I need to give the credentials for the user that I set up in my Mac here. So I'm going to give those admin credentials. and log in. And now Visual Studio is actually able to automate my Mac. It's able to drive and control the Mac through SSH because it has the credentials for that user necessary. Now, by the way, it doesn't actually store your password behind the scenes. It actually generates a key that it is allowed to hold on to and it stores that key on the Mac. So there is a trusted relationship, but your actual user password is not being stored in the Visual Studio machine. Well, before we start trying to build and run apps in an iOS simulator, we're actually going to have to connect to an iOS simulator. We can't actually get an iOS simulator on Visual Studio or on Windows, so we connect to our Mac. Now, we no longer need a build host like we used to to be running on our Mac. Instead, we can connect to our Mac directly through SSH. In order to get this started, I'm going to go up to Tools and to my iOS area and then Xamarin Mac Agent. Now, this will start off by giving us instructions on how to connect. You can see the first connection step is on your Mac, invoke Spotlight and search for remote login. This won't actually always work. However, finding your sharing app is still pretty easy within your system preferences. You can see here I've got my system preferences open and I'm just going to go ahead and grab my sharing app. Okay, so once I have that open, I'm going to make sure remote login is enabled and I'm going to add my current user or whatever user I actually want to be able to log in through Visual Studio. Okay, so now back over in Visual Studio, by the way, the rest of the instructions are right here. So back here in Visual Studio now, I'm going to close the instructions, and it's found my Mac. Great. I will go ahead and double-click that, or I could have clicked Connect down there. And then I will put in those credentials and log in. Believe it or not, that's all there is to it. We are now connected. So I can close this. Now our next step is to actually build and test an app. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is just create a new Xamarin Forms project. That's actually going to give us a really easy way to put all three platforms through their paces. So file, new project, cross-platform, blank app, Xamarin Forms Portable. Perfect. Down here, I'm just going to use the name win setup demo and click OK. 
All right, so now that that project is created, we've got the shared project, we've got a Droid project, an iOS project, and we've got a WinPhone project. Perfect, we can test all of them. Now, the Xamarin Forms template will create us a simple form with just a label. Now, to make it a little more interesting, I'm going to go ahead and add a button in here as well. So, button BTN equals new button, and just give it some text. I am a button. And we will also, just to keep things interesting and allow us to make sure that we can add breakpoints and things like that, go ahead and add some behavior to it. And we've got our anonymous method in there. And to that, I'm just going to add some code to just change the button's own text. Keep it nice and simple here. You clicked me, sir. Okay, and then add our button to our stack layout, and we are ready to test. Now, since we went through all that trouble of connecting, why don't we go ahead and test our iOS project first? We'll go ahead and set it as startup project. And then we'll select our emulator. iPhone 6s is a great selection. So we will just hit play, and it's going to build and then deploy to that emulator for us. All right, we should be able to come over here and see our app running on our Mac now. Remember, our simulator, our emulator, runs on our Mac. And here we go. We have our Xamarin, Welcome to Xamarin Forms. Here we are. We have Welcome to Xamarin Forms, and I am a button. Let's click this button and. Sure enough, you clicked me, sir, so everything's working great. If we put a breakpoint in here, we'll make sure that we can debug. Yep, hit our breakpoint. Everything on iOS is working perfectly. So, let's go ahead and stop that. And now let me set our Droid project as our startup. And just like iOS, I can do some things manually. If I want to start my Droid, I can look at my Visual Studio emulator for Android here. This is the manager where I can actually change which Android emulators I have available. So, for instance, this one's a 7-inch KitKat. Here's a 5-inch KitKat on an extra, extra high DPI phone. So this is the one I'm actually going to be debugging with right here, but I don't need to start it from here. I can. I could even download different images. But I can also just select it from here, and by hitting Start, it'll automatically start that emulator and then deploy my Android project to it. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, we have I am a button. Now let's see what happens when we click it. Sure enough, breakpoint, that's good. And then when we continue, you clicked me, sir. All right, everything is working on Android and iOS just the way we wanted it to. Now it's time to see if we can get WinPhone working just as well. Let's go ahead and right click on our WinPhone project then. Select Set as Startup. Here we go. That looks good to me. Let's go ahead and hit Start. We're going to run it on our 8.1 WVGA device. Well, we've got our splash screen waiting for our button. There it is. I am a button. Breakpoint. Continue. And you clicked me, sir. All right, all three platforms are working perfectly. So we're all set up and ready to go with Xamarin on Visual Studio. Okay, guys, that's really all there is to it. Hopefully that helped you out, and hopefully we see you in some live Xamarin University classes soon. Thanks a lot.